Hey, I'm Stephen Handy, coming to you from Vintage King Los Angeles, where we recently installed this beautiful Rupert Neve Designs 5088. Rupert Neve's legendary career in console design spans decades and is full of innovations that continue to be studio standards. The culmination of his legacy is the Rupert Neve Designs 5088. Drawing inspiration from his revered 80s series desk, this fully discrete console design incorporates key concepts, such as single-sided, fully discrete amplification, custom audio transformers for each input and output, and unmatched headroom and dynamic range. Getting to work with the console every day has been amazing, and today we're going to talk about my experiences and what's going on inside and underneath the surface of the 5088. To help me do that, we've got Chris DeRay from Rupert Neve Designs. Welcome to VKLA, Chris. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. The thing that people always talk about when it comes to Rupert Neve Designs is the feel and the character of the gear. And that especially holds true with this console. Would you be able to talk to us about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that we hear about a lot from people as well. There's the feel of the gear. There's the, the tactile experience of working on an analog console that is a very different one from how a lot of people are working. When they're in the box, they're very visually focused. They're looking at a screen. They're mixing with their eyes. And one of my personal favorite things about working on an analog console is you don't have to have a screen in front of you. My favorite 5088 configurations are ones where there is no screen in between the speakers. If you want to change something, you reach over, you grab a knob, you turn it. It's a very different physical experience that I think lets you focus a lot more on mixing with your ears and feeling this process. The character element of it, I think a lot of that comes down to the circuitry, but the transformers themselves, this is a huge part of the DNA of Rupert Neve Designs. One of Rupert Rupert Neve's first jobs was as a transformer designer. Transformer design and build has always been a crucial part of the Rupert Neve sound from the early stuff all the way up to the newest. They provide electronic isolation, so there's no noise getting into the signal path. But what most people think of is the character that they provide. A lot of this has to do with the emphasis on second order and third order harmonics that come through them. So it's the enhancement of musically relevant harmonic content, things that add to the musicality of the signal instead of creating dissonance. The other aspect of it is the full bandwidth performance of these transformers. So from an octave to two octaves below what we can hear with our ears, all the way up to well beyond 100 kilohertz. This is one of the hallmarks of Rupert Neve's designs. So transformers are super important, very, very essential to the 5088 and the sound it creates, but there's more to it. And I know you mentioned this before, that is absolutely true. From a design perspective, it really needs to be a much more holistic viewpoint. Some people will say, well, if you just take this transformer and put it in this circuit, that's the magic sauce. That's what will make it sound like a Rupert Neve product. And it's not entirely accurate because it really is about the harmony between the transformer and these custom op amps working together, which is why we developed these op amps that are in this desk. And they're fully discrete. They're class A biased. They give the console a 10 dB greater dynamic range than any of the previous designs. In this desk, the important part is that those last 10 dB are actually at the very bottom end of the spectrum. It's the stuff that would normally get lost in the noise floor. What this means is that the 5088 is able to source, mix, and retain these microscopically tiny signals all the way from the input to the output. And that results in essentially a higher resolution picture on the other end of it and is what makes this desk sound the way that it does. And this is why the first time that Rupert ever sat down in front of a 5088 and listened to music through it, he said that he just relaxed because what he heard coming out the other end of this desk was what he had been working to achieve for his entire career. Now, you just mentioned Rupert Neve and his first 5088. When did that first come out? 5088 started shipping in 
2007, 8, 9, kind of around there. Honestly, not much has changed with the desk since then. The only things that have changed have been to make it more modular, more easily serviceable and maintainable. We've upgraded some of the switches over the years, but other than that, the basic topology of the desk is the same. That is a very interesting point you bring up, mainly because music has changed drastically since 2007, 2008, 2009. What has made that possible? What's interesting about this is that we sell more 5088s now than we did when it came out. It's very much an aspirational piece for studio owners, musicians, producers, engineers. The XLR has not gone out of style during that time. There is very much still a desire and a place for very high fidelity analog recording and mixing equipment. One thing that we hear from a lot of our clients on the 5088 side is that they make fewer mix decisions down the road. They commit to things. They use fewer plugins when they're working in the box because the sounds they're getting out of the desk sound that much more finished on the way in. Is that something that you experience with it as well? I definitely experience that too, where I record a lot of real instruments, a lot of guitars, bass, you know, acoustic things. And so I want to dial that in on the way in. And without the DAW, without plugins, the console really allowed me to do that. You know, all the EQs, the silk modes, compressors and everything just allowed me to really dial in, commit to the sound like you mentioned, and I didn't have to do much work in the DAW afterwards. I feel very fortunate to be able to travel and visit these desks wherever they are. Even though every single 5088 out there is different, they all have different configurations, they're different sizes, they have different modules, there's kind of one thread that connects everybody that owns these desks, whether they're an EDM producer or a classical recordist or anywhere in between. All of these people care so deeply about the fidelity of their audio coming through this. And they are all so happy with the results they get from this desk. That's what I hear too when I get to listen to music through a 5088. There's a sense of detail and space that I have just never heard in any other console before. Let's take a look at this 5088 because the layout and construction of the 5088 is a little bit different from what most people think of when they think of a standard console. The philosophy behind this desk is that it is completely modular. It has everything that you need it to have and nothing that you don't. So this up here is our meter bridge, inputs one through 16 and groups one through eight. Meter bridge is optional, but most people do like having one. The section just below the meter bridge is called the penthouse, which is essentially a metal frame that you fill with whatever modules fit the needs of your studio. For example, this module here is our 5052, which is a mic pre up here and an inductor EQ at the bottom, which is the same EQ that's in our Shelford channel. On the output stage, it also has silk red and silk blue for varying levels of harmonic saturation on your output. This module here is our 5051 EQ compressor. So same EQ as in the 5052 and the Shelford channel. And then the compressor is very similar to the VCA compressor in our master bus processor. It's very, very fast, very utilitarian, and it's a nice thing to have across a lot of channels on a console. Now, because each of these modules is individual up here, they all have XLR outs, they have their own power, and there are output transformers on all of these. There are also input transformers on all of these. So when you come out of this and into this, you are going through multiple stages of iron, which is a big part of the sound of this desk. Down here, you have your input modules across this half of the console. These ones in this desk are the mono input modules, but we do make a stereo version that has two inputs on the back, so you could effectively double the amount of channel count on your console. On the input module, you've got a trim control, you have multiple inputs, polarity, your groups, your auxes, your pan, your solos, and your mutes. On your group modules, you have your stereo effects returns over here, you have your auxes, and you have your group masters down here. And finally, over here, you have your monitor master section. This is a super, super high-end monitor controller. It sounds absolutely amazing. Speaker selects right here, monitor source select over here. You've got your talkback, your mix insert, which is across your master here, and um, talkback and oscillator controls. 
The 5088 is available with or without moving fader automation, and the one that we offer integrates with every DAW out there. I'd like to thank you for showing me this console. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Finish King Los Angeles is one of the only places on the West Coast where you can bring in your sessions and run them through a Rupert Neve Designs 5088. We'd be happy to show you the ropes and walk you through the desk at any time. Just reach out to your Vintage King audio consultant or visit us at vintageking.com to learn more. For Chris DeRay and myself here at Vintage King Los Angeles, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.